we are often confronted with peculiar, seemingly impossible artifacts that will, after some in-depth investigation, leave one with more questions than answers. This, either due to their enormous, often seemingly impossible sizes, megaliths in some locations weighing far over 1,000 tons, somehow, once used in their construction, sometimes set aloft, proof that not only were these stones hewn but moved and lifted seemingly with ease. But also, alas, the lack of public exposure many said sites are granted, often minimal at best, thus countless examples of advanced ancient technology remain still hidden here upon our planet. As a consequence, many have avoided scrutiny. Details therein which are clearly of a controversial nature are conveniently absent any funded studies of said ruins. We feel ruins of great importance, but due to the strength of evidence one can surmount in support of past, once highly advanced ancient civilizations at said locations, they are largely overlooked and actively avoided by funded archaeologists, academics, and historians alike en masse. Simply ignored, thus, preventing all from what we feel is a birthright, an accurate, warts and all, transparent exploration of the origins of humanity and, in turn, the history of our planet. Allowing one and all to make up their own minds in regard to the origin of said sites, no matter how controversial. This is the exact reason for the channel's creation, and is the driving force behind the six books one intends to write a revolutionary cataloging of once, yet no more, deliberately overlooked or academically dismissed sites dotted all over the world. For when one explores our content, they will be made aware of a smorgasbord of unique and often inexplicable features which can be found all over Earth. In addition, it is not just the visible feats of ancient stoneworking that are the singular astonishing legacy left by a now lost once highly advanced ancient civilization. For there are many other feats accomplished in a bygone era. Prehistoric mine shafts can still be found in many areas of Earth. Not only are there still existing, seemingly machine-cut, extremely ancient, incredibly deep mine shafts in a number of areas of Earth, including those featured found within Tel Aviv, are all but one among many relics, all clearly left by a capable group hidden from the world, but ancient cities exist also, ones covered previously, which were all once somehow cut from Earth's bedrock, that due to their location have fortunately been explored by a number of individuals over the years, never funded, but merely driven by curiosity. Thus, the true astonishing depth, and indeed the incredible achievement these once were, has all been previously documented. Civilizations that were once capable of not just digging these mines to incredible depths, but were, in fact, capable of creating entire temples from one gigantic solid stone. Cut with such incredible artistic ability and accuracy, they are staggering examples of ancient engineering. In China and Japan, gigantic megaliths left mysteriously abandoned Easter Island, the unfinished obelisk Aswa, Egypt. Yangshan Quarry within China, all abandoned, with Yangshan possessing an almost detached megalith, clearly cut using incredible stone-cutting tools, a block estimated as weighing 16,000 tons when liberated from the bedrock. All these anomalies are but a few examples which support the premise of lost technology, knowledge, and an advanced civilization. It seems that the advanced mines, like those found in Tel Aviv, are but a tip of an archaeological iceberg in regards to the mystifying stone-cutting of a now lost antiquity. Why did humans placed within a lost chapter of antiquity exert such back-breaking effort in the attempt of extracting these precious metals? Who dug the Tel Aviv mines? Was it the same group who built ancient Peru? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. In 1996, Italian mineralogist Vincenzo Di Michel spotted an unusual yellow-green gem within one of Tutankhamun's necklaces. The jewel was tested and found to be made of a type of glass known as Libyan desert glass. 
The interesting thing regarding this, however, is its origins. To this day, no one seems to be able to explain how it formed. No trace of a crater has ever been discovered. An ancient meteorite, or indeed outer space object, scorching across the skies of Egypt is the basis for many religious teachings within this once amazing ancient civilization. They associated the objects and the flaming tails during such events with that of a phoenix, and the collected items, presumably nearly always meteorites, were then hammered down into wares. Nine small beads, stored at the University College London's Petrie Museum, dated to around 3200 BC, were found in necklaces along with exotic terrestrial minerals such as lapis lazuli, agate, and gold. They are some of the earliest iron artifacts ever found, and archaeologists have confirmed that they came from outer space. Meteoric iron is much harder and more brittle than copper. Quote, they were rolled and hammered into shape. This is a very different technology from the usual stone bead drilling and shows quite an advanced understanding, showing the metalsmiths knew exactly how to work this rather difficult material," said Thilo Rarin, a University College London professor of archaeology. When American geophysicist John Wasson was consulted regarding King Tut's strange gem, he curiously linked the event with one within an extremely remote forest of Siberia, an event we have covered before. Quote, when the thought came to me that this required a hot sky, I thought immediately of the Tunguska event, he told Horizon. In 1908, a massive explosion flattened 80 million trees in Tunguska, Siberia. And whatever landed there over a century ago is still there, and it kills any living organism which settles above it. And what is most interesting surrounding all of this is the ancient Egyptian accounts of what they did with a rather peculiar, rather special type of object that was, at one point, retrieved from the glassy sands of Libya. A particularly different object, which they called a phoenix egg. That hieroglyph state was secreted away within a secret chamber deep within the Great Pyramid. We have covered before the hypothesis that these stories etched in hieroglyphics may be far older than the Egyptian culture which may have preceded it. Yet, the question is clear. What could this phoenix egg be? How did a lost, global civilization once cut solid stone with such ease and precision? Unimaginably large megalithic structures, laser-like cut stones, utilized within the baffling, polygonal masonry, not to mention the mystery surrounding the construction of the Great Pyramids. Many mysterious drilled stone cores can be found throughout Giza. These enigmatic tool marks can also be found at the incredibly ancient dolmen of Valkonsky in Russia, exposing the capabilities and clear technological prowess that this lost civilization, who we feel were possibly experiencing an ice age, had left in order to survive its fallout. Yet I digress. Discovered within Austria, we were initially presented with just these three images, two of the exterior, which, if one looks closely, not only displays the porthole of a hidden chamber hidden upon the side of a solid rock face, but that the surrounding rocks had also been cut and finished to an incredibly high standard somewhere in the very distant past. This indicated to us that this chamber that is not only reminiscent of the hypogeum in Malta with the addition of the stone within the circular chamber, which we cannot avoid feeling, could have some form of connection to resonance creation, with erosion indicative of a site with an age similar to Cappadocia's ruins, but later revealed to have been, as we expected, but one chamber, in a maze akin to that of the underground city of Derinkuyu hidden within an Austrian book of antiquities, we discover a series of fortunately mapped solid stone-cut chambers which litter this enormous chunk of exposed bedrock. Clearly an astonishing prehistoric site, 
one cut by an incredibly capably, and we feel, clearly technologically advanced civilization. For why would a civilization with simple, primitive tools, such as those made of blunt or brittle stones, or soft, malleable metals, such as that of copper, go to such extremes in the creation of a maze of hidden chambers, each not only finished to an incredibly precise degree, but to have worked stones into unnatural shapes outside of these chambers, many serving no essential function as far as we can identify? Who created this prehistoric site found within the landscape of Austria? How old are the chambers? What technology or tools were utilized in the creation of such a magnificent ancient ruin? Or indeed, that of the Volkonsky Dolmen, along with the many similarly drilled cores and their stone blocks found throughout Giza? Do all these pieces of evidence indicate the past existence of a lost civilization, one who possessed advanced stone-cutting technology? We find such possibilities highly compelling.